Hello everyone. In this short video, I will explain convolution and its application in system analysis by short animation. I hope by the end of this video, we will be able to visualize how the impulse response of the system process the input as it enter the system and produce an output as time progress and hopefully determining the limits of integration will not be a source of confusion in system analysis we use convolution to find the output by convolving the input x of t with the system impulse response h of t. The convolution integral is defined as the integral of the product of the input at different instant of time by the impulse response of the system. To explain the physical meaning of this integral, let us take this RAM as the input x of t to the system. For clarity, we consider zero time as a reference for 12 noon and one for one o'clock in the afternoon and two for two o'clock in the afternoon and so forth. The impulse response of the system is h of t. You can think of the impulse response as if we excite the system by a high voltage for a short period of time, then this will be the output of the system if it's electrical system. Or you can think of it as a mechanical system and you are exciting the system by a strong force or vibration for a short period of time, then this will be the output of the system, which we call the impulse response. So now, what is the physical meaning of the convolution integral? And why are we using tau in addition to t? Well, we need the variable tau in the convolution integral because the output at t, which is the present time, will depend on the input in the present and in the past. So t in the integral is a constant representing the present input and present output and tau represent the past, the present, and the future. So y of t, that is the output at the present, which depend on x of tau, past, and h of tau, processing the past input and present input. So the next step in carrying out this integral is finding h of tau, and that is very simple wherever we see t here we replace it by tau so that will be the same thing here and now our x-axis depend on tau and this is our variable the next thing is we change x of t to x of tau so again i replace t by tau but then we have x of minus tau so that means i rotate the input horizontally around the vertical axis so i rotate this horizontally and i will get this one so this will be x of minus tau why do we need to do that because as i am sliding this input to enter the system the system will see first this part of the input which is this part that's what happened in the first hour of the input. This is what happened in the second hour and third hour. So we have to flip it. So as the input enter, the system will see the first hour of the input, second and third. The next step is we have to shift x of minus tau by t because I want to find the output at different value of t. That means if I want to find the output at two o'clock, I have to slide this input until it's at two o'clock so when t here equal two then the system will see this is the present input which is if you compare it to here this is a t equal two that is the input so the system will see this part of the input and it will start processing it but it will already saw this part of the input and this part of the input and this part of the input and it's processing it so what is the output at t equal to that will be the output due to this present input and the output due to past input at one o'clock and the output that is due two hours earlier which is this one so at two it will be the output due to this input and this past input and so forth just to clarify it if we take samples of the input and see how the system respond to these samples so we are taking now three instant we still want to know how the system respond at two o'clock what's the output at two o'clock so this is shifted to two so that means the system already see this impulse one instant of the input and already saw this one and this one so at one o'clock 
this impulse hit the system the system will output this at 130 this part of the input hit the system and the system will output this impulse response which is the impulse response multiplied by this amplitude which is 0.15 time 1 you get 0.15 this at 2 o'clock this is the impulse it's 0.2 multiplied by the impulse response here one that will be 0.2 so at 2 o'clock exactly the output will be what it's this output due to this impulse plus this output due to an earlier impulse plus this part of the output due to an input at one o'clock and you can think of it here this is the present input hitting the system this input hit the system half an hour earlier this is one hour earlier and what is the total output at two o'clock it will be this portion plus this portion plus this portion which are this portion here here and here now for a continuous system it will be this portion of the input which you plug for t here two it will give you this plot and that will be this one multiplied by the impulse response h of top which is this one you multiply them you will get a curve that looks like this and then you integrate and that will be the area and that will be your output at time two in the afternoon and integration is equivalent in the discrete case a summation of these plus these plus this but a continuous case is more accurate because you are not just taking three samples for one hour and a half you are taking the whole possible inputs hitting the system and how the system is processing it now mathematically it doesn't matter which one you rotate you can rotate the input or you can rotate the impulse response in general we rotate the signal that will make the integration easier but i think it's easier to relate convolution to the system process of the input if we rotate the impulse response for example here i am actually rotating h of t so that is h of t minus tau which is this one and i'm keeping the input the same now if i want to find what is the output at two o'clock i shift this t to two here so at two pm the output will depend on the system which is this one processing this input so now this is the present input this is the past input this is the earlier input and how the system is processing is in this input you can think of it as it favor the present input because it multiplied by one and past inputs it attenuated by this decay so you can think of these as a weighting average where its favor current input more than earlier input when you look at this one now i think it's easier to predict what the system will do to an input if you have the impulse response for example if i give you this system and this is the impulse response of the system by looking at this i can tell you this system it's just an average of an input for one second and it will give you a value by averaging all the input in one second interval then the system will move to the next one second and average all inputs and give you an output and this is a good system if i want to get rid of noise because noise will looks like this so what does this system do this system will multiply all the noise by one let's say this is one and then integrate which means sum now when it do the sum the probability of having positive amplitude and negative amplitude for noise is equal so when you sum them up the positive will cancel the negative and you will get zero but if this noise on top of a signal like this that you are interested in that won't affect it much because it will average all these inputs and give you a value then average these inputs and give you a value then average these inputs and give you a value and you will end up with a sinusoidal but that will not be the case for a high frequency let's say you have a high frequency component in your input something like this now this system will filter out this because the positives equal the negatives and you sum them up and you give one single data point and that will be zero and you could have said that if you look at 
the Fourier transform of this impulse, which is a sink function, that is omega. And this looks like a low pass filter. It will allow low frequency component like these to pass, but it will attenuate high frequency and noise. Okay, so this is the physical meaning of convolution. In the coming slides, which is part of the animation, I want you to watch the following. This will tell you the time, the output at 1.5. So that will be here. So you're going to be sliding the input to here and the output, this is the convolution integral, will be this line, which is this the equation, multiplied by this part, which is this. And that's the input. And the integral, the limit of integration will be where they overlap, which is this yellow rectangle. They overlap from 0 to t. So that is your integral. And if you carry out this integration, you will get this output y of t and if i want to know what is the input at t 1.5 which is here i plug here t 1.5 and i will get a value that is equal 0 0.097 which is this this is the output at 1.5 and if i multiply this function time this function i get this curve and if i integrate then I am finding the area, and that area will be 0 0.097, which is the output at the time 1.5. So I'm gonna show now many slides. One of the slides will be this one. Now, if you look at this slide, where are you gonna integrate? Well, the overlap doesn't matter what's t, as long as t between two and four, the overlap will be between zero and two. So the output will be if you integrate this one, you will, will be this one. And if I find the area under this curve, which is this one, if you plug for t 2.5, it will be 0.24. And one of the slides will look like this one. That's when t is 5. Where do you integrate? This is the area where the input and the output overlap. So that will be from t minus 4 to this point, which is 2. And if you integrate it, that will be the output. Now, at t equal 5 remember the system doesn't see any more input the input was the length of the input was four hours so now we are in the fifth hour there's no more inputs hitting the system so what is the system outputting it's it's output based on earlier input so the system's outputting energy stored in it due to a past input and the system will keep outputting until here where now t is 6 so the system output all energy stored and if you look at the output the length of the output 6 units which is according to one of the convolution property it should be the length of the input or the first signal which is 4 plus the width of the second signal which is 2 so when you see the animation that's what you will be seeing And these two slides, which is steps for the integration for t between 0 and 2. And this is the integration when t is between 2 and 4. So the overlap will be between 0 and 2. So you plug here 0 and 2 and you carry out the integration and you get this equation. And the last one when t between 4 and 6 and the overlap will be between t minus 4 and 2. And you carry out this integral and we use this integration table to simplify the integration steps and that will be your output thank you and see you in the next video where i will talk about convolution in the continuous and discrete time in more detail